Mario Paint drew its way onto your Super NES back in 1992. Developed and published by Nintendo, Mario Paint definitely wasn't your standard game you would expect to be released on the Super NES at the time. In fact, even calling Mario Paint a game is a bit of a stretch. It's actually a very early version of a traditional digital paint program that you would commonly find on personal computers, with the ability to use various tools to draw and animate images on your monitor. Obviously, this was a bit different from the shooters and platform games that littered the system at the time, and as such was met with more than a few confused kids when Nintendo Power started promoting the game over the course of several issues, along with Nintendo desperately trying to convince all of us kids that digital paint programs were totally radical. Actually read their minds. Should we fry it or boil it? Whoa, so I pushed a button and made it disintegrate. Then I made it all happen. But was Nintendo actually right? Was Mario Paint in fact a genuinely fun creative experience? Or was this yet another attempt by Nintendo to toss out a gimmick that landed with all the excitement of a wet fart? Well grab your favorite art palette and easel, because we're about to see if Mario Paint is the masterpiece Nintendo thought it was. <laughs> Before we get into what Mario Paint actually is, I should probably mention what came packaged with the game. Now since Mario Paint is, well, a paint program, naturally you would think you'd need a proper drawing tool to use it, and that's exactly what Nintendo stuffed inside the box with the game. Yep, every copy of Mario Paint included both a mouse and a mouse pad so that you could awkwardly draw on your TV until your heart's content. And while that was totally awesome at the time, it probably shouldn't surprise anyone that this isn't a very high quality mouse, even by 1992 standards. First off, the left and right mouse buttons are rectangular strips divided awkwardly across the front of the mouse, making it far harder than it should be just to rest your fingers on it properly, especially for someone that had never even used a mouse, like me. And of course, since this was the Stone Age, the mouse was using rollerball technology to track movement, which meant that even when you managed to use the face buttons properly, the mouse just wasn't very accurate at moving things around the screen. Also, the rollers inside the mouse would gunk up super quick, meaning you had to take it apart regularly to clean it, or the on-screen tracking would get even worse, with frequent skips, or the cursor even just refusing to move at all. This was an even bigger problem if you were using the included mouse pad, which was just a hard slab of plastic that drew dirt and hand grease to itself like a magnet. Still though, I guess you can't expect too much for what Nintendo was charging for this thing, and what was included was more than adequate enough to get your ideas up on the screen in some form. But if you're attempting to use it now, then be prepared for a lot of frustration in trying to make it do anything that you want it to do. Once you've got the hang of holding on to your new mouse, then it's time to fire up the game proper and start creating. As mentioned before, Mario Paint is a very early version of a PC paint program, and one that's stuck on a home console at that. So don't go in expecting anything close to what you'd normally see even on a basic paint program these days. And seeing Mario Paint's main art studio screen is more than enough to hammer that home. The tools provided to create your masterpiece are little more than a few different brush sizes, a meager selection of colors at the top of the screen, and a few other things like a fill bucket and some shape tools to to make some basic shapes without having to rely on the mouse. Using these tools should allow you to create some fairly simple art, though the low resolution of the canvas certainly hampers your ability to create anything involving fine details. Combine that with an already substandard mouse that hates doing anything you tell it to, and your hands will probably be cramping up within minutes of getting anything close to what you have in your head up on the screen. At least using the tools are simple enough, and everything is laid out right on the screen instead of having to dig through menus. This makes Mario Paint incredibly easy to pick up and immediately start drawing whatever you want, which is by far the game's most successful feature as far as being an art program that anyone can create basic art with. And while the toolset and hardware certainly limits what you can accomplish with Mario Paint, Nintendo did at least include more than enough pre-made extras to play around with if making stuff on your own gets too tiring. This includes a large number of ready-made stamps featuring the Mario crew and other objects that you can use to insert just about anywhere, multiple color patterns to liven up your creation in some pretty trippy ways, and even a coloring book feature that lets you skip the whole drawing thing and just fill in the colors like a two-year-old. Beyond that though, there's not much more to help you along, so it's definitely going to be up to you and your imagination to make the most out of Mario Paint. <laughs> 
Thankfully, Mario Paint isn't just limited to drawing, and actually includes an animation studio so that you can not only draw whatever you want, but also attempt to animate it as well. And if you thought the drawing aspect of Mario Paint was basic, then you probably won't be getting too much out of the animation side of things either. You can choose between 4, 6, or 9 frames of animation to use to animate your abomination, with the higher numbers reducing the frames to an almost comically small size. Your only help with animating is the ability to copy one frame to another, with nothing even as basic as showing transparencies to help you out. So everything you change for the animation will just have to be through comparing and contrasting previous frames, which isn't exactly ideal if you've ever animated anything before. If you somehow manage to make something you're happy with, you can then use the pathing tool to drag it around anything you drew in the art studio to give your twitching, horrific creation the illusion of movement. It's cool Nintendo even included it, but overall the animation segment of the game is probably the weakest of the bunch, unless you just have a thing for creating the worst animation projects known to man and then forcing your friends to watch them, which I most certainly do. Rounding out the modes in Mario Paint is actually the one the game's still most well known for, music composition. Now as simple as everything else in Mario Paint has been up until this point, you'd think making music would be even more limited. After all, music composition on its own is fairly complex. Amazingly enough though, Mario Paint has included a decently full featured music creation tool that allows you to place icons that all have pre-made sounds attached to them around a bar line to create just about anything you want. Each of the icon's sounds will pitch up or down depending on where you stick it on the bar line, along with allowing you to place up to three icons with it to create more advanced compositions, if you know what you're doing at all. Speaking of the sound effects, special mentions should be made for the variety and just how strange some of these things are. While you definitely get some that sound like actual instruments, a good chunk of them just seem to be random noises and animal sounds. So if you ever wanted to make your own symphonic masterpiece consisting of nothing but cat meows, <laughs> Mario Paint has you covered. <laughs> at least until someone comes and forcibly removes the mouse from your hand. Now to me personally, this whole thing may as well just been completely useless, since I was about as musically inclined as a deaf frog. But to other, more talented people, this became the entire reason to buy Mario Paint. In fact, if you see anything regarding Mario Paint these days, it's usually due to someone making some new insane composition using this tool. And that's seriously impressive, since I still to this day have no clue how to make anything on it not sound like someone fell over on top of a keyboard and died. So if you're musically talented at all, then this aspect of the game is actually still worth checking out, just for the incredibly strange compositions you can create using these weird sound effects. When Mario Paint first came out, I was absolutely blown away by the concept of being able to use a device like a mouse to draw images on a screen. And while that idea wasn't exactly brand new at the time, I never had access to computers that allowed me to do such a thing before, let alone something as crazy as using a mouse to do it with. In fact, Mario Paint's actually the first thing that taught me how to use a mouse, long before I was actually sitting in front of a computer with one. And I realize that this may all sound preposterous in this day and age, but I can assure you that things were quite a bit different back in 1992. And having access to such an affordable program and tools to properly use it back then was nothing short of inspiring to a 12-year-old kid like me. And that's exactly what it ended up doing, inspiring me. It immediately made me aware of just how much I enjoyed digital art and got me to continue doing it all the way up to present day. Sadly though, the game itself is one of those games that just hasn't aged well, probably for obvious reasons. Sitting back down to Mario Paint these days and trying to do anything with it on the art side of things is a mostly painful experience. Unless you want to compose some music with it, the technology and hardware just doesn't hold up, no matter how many little extras Nintendo tossed in here to try and make it more fun. But that doesn't mean I still don't absolutely love this game, and as basic as it was, it still managed to introduce me to a passion of mine that will probably stay with me for the rest of my days. All thanks to a basic paint program, the worst mouse ever made, and a little Nintendo creativity.